This is a demonstration of how to draw a female head in a three-quarter position. What we're going to start with is a sphere. Try to draw it as accurately as you can, meaning as round as you can. If you need to think of it as a circle, think of it as a circle. The reason I say sphere is because that way you're thinking of it in space as opposed to thinking of it as a flat shape. Okay, the axis of the head. Think of it again as like a globe and or sphere and it's got a tilt to it because we don't want to do just a simple um, you know. Okay. Now, find where the equator, halfway across, would be. Because this head is going to be slightly looking downward. Again, it makes it more lifelike. People don't usually have their head in a rigid position. So by tilting it somewhat downward, it seems more lifelike. Now, we're coming across the top of the sphere. This is going to be the center of the front plane. So you're coming across, and technically you'd be going under here, but we don't need that part. Okay, as you come across, you want to figure out where the plane changes, meaning where the top plane ends and the front plane begins. I'd say it's roughly around here. So from here to the halfway point is going to start the divisions of the front plane of the face, just like in the front view. And at this point, you drop the center line straight down. Okay, so what you're also looking for is this T. I don't know if you can see it, but it makes a T right here or across. This would be the brow line. And now the distance from here to here, you want it to be the same division to where the nose is going to end up. So that they're in equal sections. Then, the distance from here to here, you want to be where the chin is going to end up. So again, so that's in the equal sections. Alright, now once you've gotten this far, you want to join you want to draw in the uh, side plane of the face and find the corresponding side plane on the other side, which would be here. So you're trying to establish a head shape. And as you're trying to establish the head shape, you're going to want to make corrections because I just noticed now that the ball shape is coming out way too far. Okay, now halfway back is going to be where the ear is going to end up. The mouth is two thirds of the way between the nose and the lips. Following that same curve that we have, the tilt of the sphere you're going to want to get the jawline. Another way to do the jawline is right from between the eyes it should be a 45 degree angle. Okay, the eye line. I'm going to drop the eye line to here below the brow line. Okay, so now we have the basis of the head. We'll have the neck coming off roughly about here the neck joins, since a, you know we're doing a female, the neck joins like kind of right behind the ear. So this would be the, you know, her skull. Keep it light and keep it generalized at this point. And I'm bringing the back of the head in more because it's out too far. Okay. So, first feature I usually put in is going to be the nose.
Why? Because it's a stationary feature and it helps me measure other things. So here's the nose. And again, I'm using a blunt pencil to keep it soft because I don't want to be pinned down to anything at this point. Things might go wrong. <laughs> okay, and again, I'm fixing the shape of the head. I'm looking at it now as, you know, trying to get a likeness. Well, at least a likeness of a pretty woman. Okay, you know that the nostril ends up being the marker for where the eye is. Because the nose on a woman is slightly, you want it to be small on a pretty woman anyway, is uh, you're going to move the eyes slightly back. So this is the eye. And again, draw lightly so if it doesn't look right, it's easy to correct it without having to erase. When you draw it dark, you've pinned it down. Okay, that's the first eye. Again, looking at the base of that eye, I want to get the second. Now this eye, remember, is a sphere as well, sunk into a into the head. And therefore, it's more compressed looking than that first eye. Okay, and now I'm putting on the eyebrows. All right, now I look at this and right away I say, oh, look, the chin's too long. So I'm moving the chin up. Okay, the shape of the lips. Here's the center from the nose. So the lips are gonna be here. Okay, so now, if it doesn't, if she doesn't look like she's going to end up an attractive woman, you want to junk your drawing at this point. <laughs> so, all right. So this is the drawing so far. Now, very often at this point, and I'm going to do it now, I would check the drawing in reverse by holding it up to the light because this is the basic structure. Uh, when you hold it up to the light and look at it in reverse, meaning flipping it over, it helps you see things that you wouldn't have seen by just looking at front view. So we're lifting it up and we're looking at it and you're looking at a blank piece of paper. Okay, and one of the first things I notice is the top of the head's too high. So I bring it down. Okay. Now, switching pencils. Why? Because now I'm picking up a pencil that's more, uh, what's the word? Exacting. Okay, here's the, the eye. Now you want thick lashes. So, but lashes are grouped. So they read as a mass. And the lashes are thickest on the lower lid back here. Here's the little tear duct area. It flips a little bit up towards the end and you have a little bit of the eyelid showing. Okay. Now I'm reinforcing where the nose is. It fades out because the light kind of drowns it out so you don't see everything. But here where it turns under you'll see it and here's the nostril and here's the side of the nostril. Moving back to this eye, I'm looking at this eye when I draw this eye. So you want to get it shape right.
Remember it's compressed because it is on the side, meaning it's an orb. And this is, at this point you want to get the um, lashes to look like, again, like they flip. So this is Okay, now we've got the eyes. When I do this eye, I want to find that side plane of the face. It comes under here. And now I know that the forehead, I'm just emphasizing where things are going to be. Okay, the eyebrows. Again, it's like one quarter towards this side, three quarters on this side. And I always think of them kind of like a 1934 Ford Fender. Because, you know, you got to think in terms of curves. Okay, so back to where we were. This comes slightly under. The cheekbones from here drop down straight at this angle, but they don't go past like where the brow ridge is. That's the most important thing to remember. Now you can slightly indicate where the mouth barrel would be because the cheekbone comes down and then slightly goes out here and then comes in a little and then at the chin comes out slightly again. Not too much though. I mean basically you could do it all. If I was doing this more cartoony, like when I used to draw comics, uh, like superhero comics, this would just be a straight line. You wouldn't bother with all this. Okay, now I'm going back to where the jawline is going to be. Okay, now for the mouth, here's where the lip area is, here's the center. I'm going to slightly make it look like she's a little bit happy. So just turning it up slightly at the corners, but basically it's pretty straight across. The upper lip is like a stretched out M. The lower lip is still like a stretched out U or W. Again, keep watching the shape. Okay, and the center of it would divide because, remember the two sections of the lip. Darkest right underneath the lip. Alright, so we've gotten, we've gotten uh, fairly close to being a finished head. The eyes. I always draw the iris before I draw the pupil because that way you can tell if it's centered correctly. And then you can put in the pupil. It's much easier this way. I mean you could put a little dot for the pupil and do it that way, but I find the bigger shape is works better. Okay, I'm going to turn her into a, a well-known character from Warren Comics, Vampirella. Why? Because she looks like Vampirella. And first got to find out where the ear is. The ear goes between the brow, remember on, the, on a curve, between the eyebrow line and the nose line. So this is the base of the ear. The only reason I'm drawing the ear in is because she wears earrings. And now the jawline, by the way, would tilt slightly forward as it comes and joins right there. Alright, so let's just, before I get into Vampirella, um, 
let's just go over. This is her head at this point. Here's her neck going to the back of the head. Here's her neck in the front. Her shoulder would probably be right about here because you want a longer neck. Now, in the case of Amparella, she's got, I don't know what you would call it, some kind of clasp because her collar comes out and joins onto this. Then this comes around the back of the neck and comes towards the front to join. And this is where the wing would be, and then this is the angle this is going at now. And this is like a circular Okay, so this is kind of, actually let me make her collar a little bigger, looking at it, and give it a little more movement. Just cause that's how I think of it. Different artists draw it different ways, what the hell. So, now, again, I'm just gonna hold up to the light to make sure the head's really finished as far as without the hair. All right, well, again, <laughs> I'm gonna make a slight change. Oh, that's right, I'm supposed to center this back. Um, I'm gonna make a slight change because the head was too high in the back. So here you have um, a bald Vampirella. To clarify it, I'm just going to erase. Usually I wouldn't erase this because the hair is going to end up over it anyway. So, hair is always bigger than the head. That's the first thing. Now I'm switching to a really softer, well actually I'm going to start with this guy. And uh, what I'm going to do is, right about here, the bangs are going to come from the top of the head. Here's where they're going to split. I told you this was the slow method. <laughs> There's a way of doing this much, much faster, but this way at least you hopefully understand everything I've said. And this is the way I learned. So. I would say it's a good method to start with. Once you get faster at it, you can take shortcuts. And that way, it doesn't take you however long this is taking to draw a single face. Because boy, if you did this in the comic book world, <laughs> it would take you days to do a page. Okay, so, again, over the top of the head, the hair has a thickness to it. All right, now here's the bangs. If you got a curve like this here, I'm going to put a curve like that on this side. Okay, we want to show that her earring. So I'm just going to bring this back a little because that earring comes down here and it looks like it would look like this. It's kind of a boomerang shape. But part of it's covered by her hair. Okay, so now we've got the shape of her hair. Okay, now we know where the plane change is and that's where you have the highlight area. Now I'm just mapping this out because this is a demonstration. So this would be the highlight area for her bangs. To know it in advance. But that's not how I would normally do it because I just like to go in. I'm going to a very very soft pencil. Okay, This is where the hair goes back this way. 
just so you know what I'm trying to do. But I'm going to start with, also this is distracting, so I'm going to take it out. Um, in fact, I'm going to take out the head area because otherwise it's going to show through when I do the hair. I'm just making some last minute adjustments on her face. I'm shrinking the chin slightly. Okay, now back to the hair. We are going to start by I like to do it so it feels like real hair to me and drawing this way I always find I'm starting at the base, I'm going towards the highlight and I'm fading it out. You might get some lines crossing into it but her hair basically comes down right to her bangs I mean right to her eyebrows. Okay so here's that and then on this side this will all end up in shadow and then, okay, now here's another mass of hair that's going to have a shine to it. So right about here, I figure, is going to be where the shine will be. And then it goes pretty much under. And that's why I fixed the side of her face, because that way it ends up blending with this, hopefully. And see the shadow from her. And, and this kind of fades out. And you draw some strands of hair cutting across the the highlighted area. Okay, and then we're back to the top. So I'm going to shrink this highlight just a little bit. It's too big. Okay, now we're back to the top, which I actually shouldn't have left, but part of it's because I have to keep things um, centered for this video. I usually move the paper around a lot. Okay, now we're coming, let's say right about here is where her bang starts to fall. So we're coming across the top. And again, like have some strands going across that hit the shadow pick up shadow. Alright, so here's the top of her, the bang area of her head. She's a head banger. Um, now, from here, there's going to be a slight, again, a slight highlight here where the hair changes direction. I like to go the way the hair flows. Usually I would again be turning the page because I like to start at the back here and work it towards the front. Which is what I'm doing. Okay, and as it gets closer to the side plane, it's going to fade out the highlight. Okay, so now basically we have the hair falling forward, falling back. You can, you know, might do this type of thing, covering part of her collar, collar sticking out. 
all this back here is going to end up in shadow, side plane. Just adding a few, again, a few strands into the lighted area. So all this ends up in shadow. Gonna get it's the shadow side, shadow here. That was too heavy a shadow. Okay, so got that. Moving this more to the center. That's why you draw light. You always gotta readjust things. Especially when you're doing a woman who's supposed to be attractive. Guys, it's much easier to plow your way through really quickly. And later I'll do a demonstration of a guy. Um, I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. Okay, and just for the record, like to make your drawing a little bit more attractive, you might want to put some accents, like where this is under. It keeps the eye moving. Gives emphasis more instead of just looking so homogenous. I'm putting slight tone on our lips just to make it look a little better. Okay, and the other plane of the chin, and here. These shadows start with a hard edge, like that. This is the side plane of this, side plane of this. And that's basically, you know, at this point, if I was doing this for somebody, first of all, I would have used better paper, and second of all, um, part of the reason for better paper is you can see, like, <laughs> my hand was sweating. But also, I would clean up all these construction lines. So, I have another example here. Same drawing I did as the, the pre-demo of Vampirella. And uh, again, you could see how light <coughs> the construction, <coughs> how light the construction lines are relative to the final pencil.